Welcome to another episode of Beat the First Man with me, Reedy. Thankfully, the Navy weren't sent in to stop me, just them little fishermen off the coast of France. So this week's show goes ahead as scheduled, and we've got classics for you, such as How Old, Your Name Shit, or Is It Great? Ah, Ted's back with his little knob of the week, and the Sunset Radio join us on Zooming In with the ultimately brilliant criteria for selecting their five-a-side five team. So stick around and watch that. So what are we waiting for? Flick open the Zippo lighter, set fire to the Mitre Deltas. Let's go. So here we go, episode 38 of our silly little show, the only show on YouTube or TV where you guess how old some old footballer was, you laugh at a stupid name for a football team, and you watch a wife who knows nothing about football try and predict a football result. I mean, if that's not top, top entertainment and hasn't whetted your appetite, what will? Uh, if you are new to the show, please click the subscribe button down below. You'll also get to know that I'm pretty shit at doing that. Um, click the little bell as well so you don't miss another episode um, and more importantly give us likes comment below anything you like I reply to every single comment so please put your comments down below um, praise abuse anything if you abuse me it probably will get deleted to be honest but yeah fire in your comments so let's get started with how old the game that's got everybody talking well everybody watches this anyway um, easy enough a picture of a player from olden times, olden times, Jesus Christ, the 80s, uh, will pop up on your screen and all you have to do is guess how old that player was when the picture was taken. So it's a little bit tricky if you're new, uh, but you know, you'll get, you'll get the hang of it. So this week we go nuts for a Brazil from Scotland, a man who made 203 appearances for Hibs before a brief spell with Hamilton, and a further 136 appearances for 4 far 4 no, just 4 far Athletic. Um, he also made one appearance for the Scotland under 21s, but even more brilliant, he went on to drive for Lothian buses. Now that's what we like. When footballers retire doing normal, sensible jobs, I can see it now. Harry Kane driving a double-decker bus round Walthamstow. Not. Anyway, we digress. So, Ali Brazil. See, nuts in Scotland. Brazil. Brilliant. Um, pretty simple. When this photo was taken... How old was he? So the answer will be revealed later in the show. My sidekick Ted will come back and try and help you with your guesses. So little shouty man, he's back, fresh from his rant about the European Super League. I had to give him a week off last week. He was exhausted after that one. Um, just when I thought football was getting back to normality and I'd have nothing to rant about, the commentary team at the end of the Chelsea v Real Madrid game came along and stepped up to the plate. So... What did they do? I hear you say. What did they do, Reedy? I need to get like, some sort of recording of me doing that rather than just talking out the soul in my mouth. Um, so obviously, Chelsea Man City final. They, you know, the commentators are obviously quite excited about that. Final being played in Istanbul. There's another rant I could have about the fact we're playing it in the biggest COVID hotbed currently in Europe. But uh, no, it's not that. So the commentators... With about a minute to go, as it was pretty obvious it was going to be a Chelsea v Man City final. And I quote, said, this is a great result for English football. Okay, let's rewind that a second. A great result for English football. See, that wasn't fancy editing, I just said it again. Um, okay, let's take a look at the facts. There are two English teams in the final. That is, that is good for English football, there's no two ways about it. Uh, and the younger English players that will be playing in the final will benefit greatly from a Champions League run. However, I think we need to dig a little bit deeper than that, don't you? So, and I, got, I made some notes because I'm very professional. So the Manchester City side that knocked out PSG had three English players out of the 11 that started the game. Um, John Stones, Kyle Walker, Phil Foden. Kyle Walker arguably coming near the end of his international career. Stones, yeah, okay. Foden on the way up, definitely. 
The Chelsea side against Real Madrid had two English players in the starting eleven. So of 22 players that started two matches, uh, a grand, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, well, I mean, if you count the Real Madrid and the PSG, so the 22 players across the Chelsea and the Man City team, across those two games, five players were English. So less, less than 25% were English players. So almost as many Germans and Brazilians were playing in the team. So was it a great result for German football? Great result for Brazilian football? No. Nah. Um, OK, let's go broader. Let's move away from the Premier League. Let's take English football as a whole. So let's take Oxford United, a team that I know well, a team that currently play their trade in League One, got half a sniff of the playoffs over the weekend. So was it a great result for them? Nah, of course it wasn't. Do you think they gave a shite? No, of course they didn't. All they're interested in is if they make the playoffs this weekend. The Oxford fans couldn't give two monkeys that Chelsea and Man City got through to the Champions League final. It's just ridiculous. How about Tottenham, Man United? Two fairly big rivals of the two sides that have got to the final. Is it a great result for them? Of course it wasn't. The only people it was a good result for was Manchester City FC and Chelsea FC. And everyone connected with them. In reality, for everybody else, nobody really cares who got to the final. Yeah, they might want Chelsea and Man City to get to the final. You know, I was quite pleased Man City got to the final. But the reality is, the, the stark reality, it's not great for English football. That, my friends, is what they commonly known as idle commentary. Stick around this weekend, you'll find some more idle commentary. You won't have to go looking very far, trust me. So, your name's shit, or is it great? We ain't done one of these for a couple of weeks either. So it's quite simply, we trawl world football and we find a team name that we dig out and we quite simply ask the question, your name's shit, or is it great? Ah! So we head to Botswana and a club who are nicknamed the Ungurungu. Now, I appreciate that any of my Botswanian friends watching this may be picking me up on my pronunciation, pronunciation, I can't even say pronunciation, of the Ungurungu. Um, but uh, they are a, what's a local name for a bushbuck? No, I didn't know what one of those was either. I will reveal all. So up until 2019, the Ungurungu, and that's not their team name, that's just, that's, you know, that's their nickname, their team name's coming. Um, they played in the Botswana Premier, Botswana Premier Division. But sadly, uh, relegation forced them down the league in 2019. Uh, they now play in the first division. They should form some sort of Botswana and Super League. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Um, they play in the town of Moan. My Botswana and definitely needs some work. Um, and they go by the name, sit back, ladies and gentlemen, the Sankoyo Bushbucks FC. Yes. So... As it turns out, a bushbuck is an antelope in Africa. I had to Google that to find that out. Um, if you look at their badge, there it is. There's the bushbuck. So, quite simply, Sankoyo, Sankoyo Bushbucks FC. Your name's shit. Or is it great? Ah! Leave your comments below. Let us know what you think. Are you a bushbuck fan? Are you a fan of the Ungurungu? Is my pronunciation of all of them shit? Probably yes. Here he is then, the star of the show, our mate Ted. So, how are you, Ted? How was Binder last week? Um, any any good? I deleted the app reading. Oh, okay. Did it did it not go to plan, mate? No, I got catfished. You got catfished on a dating app for bears. Yes, really, catfished. I expected a cute little panda and upturned this stinky, smelly, unkempt grizzly bear. In fact, he reminded me a lot of you, really. Rude. So, well, if nothing else, you must be happy that we're lying of duty. At least you know who H is now. No, nope, that was a crock of shit as well. All the time invested in that show for that ending. It was absolute crap. To be honest, I might, have watched re I might as well have watched reruns of this show. Well, Ted, this is a top show. Top show? Hmm, let's have a think about that. Rude again. He said, you're not being very pleasant today. Anyway, 
Have you got any nominations for this week's Little Knob of the Week? Here's the award if you've never seen it before. Highly expensive. <laughs> Dropped knob. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I want to go back to last Sunday as the Manchester Reds, as we now refer to them, were uh, protesting on the pitch about the ownership of the club and Graham Souness sw swooped in for the trophy. Ah, yes, Ted, I do recall this. So uh, Neville and Carragher called it right and understood that this protest was a frustration of years of a club that's been badly run. Yeah, the Glazers have come in, they've spent billions of pounds, but billions of pounds that they don't have. They, they've literally spiralled Manchester United into tons of debt. Um, it's been a car crash. The stadium, Old Trafford's a glorious stadium, or was, it is literally just going to pieces. They've done nothing with it in the years they've been in. In general, it's rubbish. So, Mr. Souness decided that, that a new thing about these protests, it wasn't any of that. He decided it was all down to lack of success on the field. No, 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 Mr. Souness. Please know, I am saying this from the safety of my own home and the fact that Graham Souness isn't likely to catch up with me and two foot tackle me across my back garden and onto my decking, which he probably would. Um, really, I am still here. I know you are, Ted. Sorry, mate, I got, got carried away. Well, just give him the award. We all know he's a knob. Graham, I'd like to point out these are the thoughts of Ted, not me. Feel free to two foot him across the garden. But this week, Graham Souness, you are forgetting the protest situation completely and utterly wrong. This week's Little Knob of the Week. So, Ted, are you back later for the reveal? How old? Oh, yeah. Does that fella, does he drive the BTFM bus? What, Graham Souness? No, you knob. Ali Brazil. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, he drives for Lothian buses. Right, so we'll see you later then, mate. As pleasant as always. Right, so last week, you'll remember we did the draw for the Premier League managers. It's a knockout competition where all 20 Premier League managers were in a hat, blah, 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 blah. We're through to the last 16 and we drew the category and we drew the three. So the category was putting up a shelf. Yep, highbrow, top quality entertainment, this. So we did the draw. So we're going to preview the first four ties of the Premier League managers. It's a knockout competition. No, no music. I've matured. I'm not going to be dancing to that silly theme tune this week. Don't worry. So the first tie we're going to look at, I'm going to go all professional. Uh, Mikel Arteta v Scotty Parker. So let's face it, Arteta would have a very, very smooth shelf. It would properly look the part, but under pressure, that shelf would just collapse and fall off the wall. You just know it would. You know, one tiny bit of pressure on it, the whole thing comes crashing down. Scotty Parker, as shelves go, it would probably look amazing. He'd have created it from scratch. But what he'd have done is he'd have forgotten, he'd have forgotten the brackets or something. Like he'd have been stood there with a shelf thinking, why isn't this working? It, it should all work. It's all perfect. And then we get like a streets montage of him stood there with the shelf. No brackets, wondering why it wouldn't go on the wall. Tough call. I think Arteta probably sneaks it because he would get it on the wall and it would be there. You just have to put really, really light things on it, like bits of paper or stuff. Um... The second tie, this is a tough call, this is a brutal call. So David Moyes v Sean Dyche, the, uh, the El Ginger Classico. So David Moyes, I mean that man would build a solid shelf. He'd have some sturdy brackets, it'd be a solid old bit of wood. Um, would it look pretty? Nah, probably not. Dyche, well, pretty easy that would be. Wood, nails, bang, wall, shelf, up. That would be it, the Sean Dyche, that would be, that would be him. It's a really tough call. I think Moyes by a whisker because I think he would take a little bit more time over it. But tough call. So you don't forget, you will be able to vote on these from Tuesday onwards. We'll come to that at the end of the ties. So Dean Smith v Marcelo Bielsa. I mean, let's fix it. Smith would go for the old-fashioned method. There wouldn't be a lot of finesse about it. You could bet your bottom dollar he'd moan about how it looked afterwards and how the bloke in the shop had sold him the wrong shelf and sold him the wrong brackets and... Everything would be everybody else's fault, bar is, but you know, he would do the job. But he also, I mean, he would watch hours of videos on YouTube of people putting up shelves and how shelves should go up, and he'd prepare for days. But would the shelf actually go up? You know, would he get that shelf up in the end? I think Smith probably wins it, to be honest. You know, I love, I love Marcelo, but I think when it comes to putting up a shelf, I think Dean Smith's probably going to beat him. 
Um, Pep Guardiola v Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, the Manchester derby of shelf putting up. Pep shelf, well, he'd look to find a new method of putting the shelf up, wouldn't he? He'd get the wood up first and the brackets to follow. You know, he wouldn't he wouldn't stick to, to normal rigmarole. Could he put it up at an angle? You know, he'd be looking for that different different way of doing things. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he'd have a massive collaboration of screws, but he just wouldn't know the best ones to use. He'd just... He'd struggle for ages trying to find the best screws to put the shelf up with, wouldn't he? I think it's Pep. I think Pep gets that shelf up better than Ollie. So, basically, from Tuesday onwards, the Tuesday to Thursday, on Twitter and Facebook, on Beat the First Man, the votes, the um, polls will be there. So please vote to get your uh, your favourites through. We'll have the other four ties next week, which we'll preview. You'll be able to vote on them the week after. Remember, they're playing for a place now in the quarterfinals. Where there's three other categories that three other categories that we still haven't uh, unveiled. So Premier League manager, it's a knockout. Again, highbrow, top class entertainment. <laughs> Little dum dum at the end for you, a bit like EastEnders. So zooming in this week on zooming in, I was joined by Ricky and Az of the band The Sunset Radio. They were two absolutely brilliant lads, and we had such a laugh. Even when we finished recording, we carried on chatting for another five minutes. We had such a, such a crack until we almost ran out of time. Um, so all I want you to think as you watch this is shirts, beer, and bastards. Okay, shirts, beer, bastards. Remember those three things. They're five a side team. Absolutely brilliant twist. I wasn't expecting it at all. I really wasn't. They, they caught me out with it big time. But it's very, very good and it works. And the midfield duo is fantastic. Um, good tunes as well, so be sure to go and look them up afterwards. So um, here we go with zooming in. This is the Sunset Radio with a clip of them in action to follow. Zooming in. Three. So welcome to another instalment of Zooming In, where I'm joined by two members of the Sunset Radio. We have Ricky, a Leeds United fan, and Az, a Man United fan, which of course we will have fun with both of those two later when we get around to football. But um, gents, welcome to the show. How are you both? Good, mate. Thanks for having us on. Nah, no problem at all. Yeah, cheers, Mark. I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not Mark Chopper Reed. Um, <laughs> hosting the, the podcast but it's to, you know. to be fair if you ask some of my old Sunday teammates they would probably say it is but you know I'm a grown-up adult now and I've matured and I'm much more sensible he says hosting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. hosting a shitty podcast on YouTube <laughs> hey no it's great we've uh, I think so to Ricky earlier and we've watched a couple and uh, yeah it's good work mate it's good yeah it's all right it's good it's good fun so um Sunset Radio so obviously there will be people out there who don't know who you are. So here's your opportunity, gents. Here's your platform. Who are the Sunset Radio? What are you all about? Tell us all. Why? Well, well, um, well, well. yeah, this was always going to happen, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah, go on, really. we'll start. As is it? If you like the Gaslight Anthem, if you like Bruce Springsteen, that's us. <laughs> we don't have the E Street Band, though. We don't have the E Street Band, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah. Um, what, what did we discover the other day? Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, that's, <laughs> we finally found a bracket that we uh, we fit into. And I think it's this old car thing, which there's about seven bands in total. That's, I think it's New Jersey punk rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, I mean, it's funny you should say that because every band I've had on here, as, as a non-musically trained person in any way, shape or form, I always try and compare you to somebody that I've heard before because it's just my only sort of go-to. Yeah. Listening to your tunes on the way home tonight, you are the most difficult to try and compare to anybody. <laughs> it's tough, isn't it? yeah. we, we've struggled with this like the whole time. Like we're not, we don't have the, um, the that tr traditional sort of British indie pop sound, but it's yeah, it's hard, isn't it? It's really hard. Yeah, it is, yeah, like it's it's even like don't worry, Max. It's hard for us, like to pigeonhole us. <laughs> Oh, what do you sound like? And you, you spoke like five minutes, and then by that point, they've walked off and stopped being interested in the conversation. But, well, the yeah, best, it the is best quite could, difficult. The best I could come Which up with. It's really a good thing. Yeah, it is a good thing. I think so. You, you're very, you've got a very unique sound. But the best I could come up with was a mix of three 
thrown together. One you're probably going to hate when I say it, but I, w- I will say it anyway. So a mix of sort of a, an edgy McFly with like Green Day. And you know when you watch American movies and you've got those tracks that are on in the background of, of various... <laughs> they have new, it's a mix of all three of those. And it's like... <laughs> It was the best I could come up with. I couldn't come up. Hey, we once had one reviewer. He reviewed oh. a song. The reviewer, and they came back with, "They sound like the Goo Goo Dolls and something else I can't really figure out." And I was like, <laughs> couldn't even be bothered to yeah. finish and solve this. <laughs> so you know, on the doll now. <laughs> but but no. But just going back to what you said about American movies. Yeah, we we actually supported uh, a band that had a song um, on a soundtrack to a well-known American movie, didn't we, Rick? Oh, yeah, we um, supported Echo Belly, who had a song on the Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. And <laughs> what it's did a you story do? I'll, I'll, you know, I'll tell the what grandkids, what I? What did you do? I, well, I, I just brought it up within 30 seconds of oh, wait, did, you walked straight to uh, the walked singer. Up to the Dumb and Dumber soundtrack. There's, there's a lot of these stories, Mark, that get kind of, um, you know, we don't let the truth get in the way of a good story, but <laughs> all right, fair enough, we'll go with that. But yeah, it, was, it wasn't it was too far away from that, but yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I listened tonight to night. Flowers, and I have to say, I thought, right, I'm going to give this two or three, and by the end of two or three listens, I absolutely loved it. And of literally, that's, that is going to be a definite go-to when driving home down the M1 because it's a proper foot to the floor um, kind of tune. So yeah. obviously I've, I've seen some things on Instagram. You guys are just getting back together in the studio and stuff. Are you working on new tracks at the moment? Are you you building towards new stuff coming out at the moment? Yeah, um, we got together last week. Obviously it's been difficult for everyone, hasn't it? With all the world we're living in and stuff, but we got together and we're working on um, one that's just going to be, it's going to be one of those that if it comes together, it'll be, it'll be absolutely brilliant, I think. Um, Put it this way, I've had to buy a new guitar pedal for it. Yeah, so we'll we have to buy extra equipment to make it work, so hopefully it's not all in vain, but I don't know about you, Rick, but I think it's going to be, um, it's going to be brilliant when it comes together. Yeah, it's a good song. I mean, Adam, the singer, he, he, uh, he wrote it and he recorded it first on Garage Band and sent it out to all his lot, and he used sort of like a Hammond organ on it, and we've tried to do it without the, without the Hammond organ, um, and it hasn't really hasn't really worked so I've had to buy a Hammond organ effects pedal essentially to get that sound that we achieved on the sort of on the garage from recording when we come to play it live so hopefully next week it'll all fall back into place when we've got this this new pedal. Fab and um, it's funny you to talk about lockdown there so there's been uh, guys I've spoken to previously some are very positive about lockdown and their music they felt it was giving them time to be really creative really get together and, and come together as a band uh, and really work hard all the despite the fact they're not together some have said it's been very negative they found it very difficult because they've not been performing live or they found it difficult to be creative where, where do you guys sit in terms of how lockdowns affected you guys yeah it, obviously it's been an unbelievable year hasn't it and not necessarily in a good way. It, we tried the, the, the garage band thing. Um, it just won't work. And I think, you know, you, you need to be together sometimes to, to make stuff really work, you know, which I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Rob and Adam as well, who aren't here. But, you know, they'll tell you, it's, you just can't iron stuff out the same than, you know, the human interaction and face to face. And, the, you know, even like, oh, how's this sound? You know, and it's this split second thing that could change yeah you know you, you're all you know i'm a, sat home messing around with stuff and it's like oh well, you know i'll just bring him up i'll just and b- before you know three days have passed and you know and it's like you, you're dwelling on an idea or whatever and it's someone else might be thinking something completely different so then it just change turns into a massive deal and a, and yeah so it's it has been quite difficult hasn't it rick yeah i think i think for us as well like because of our sound, like we are very sort of guitar driven. It's quite a full band sound. When we try to strip it back, it's it's okay. We've got some recording of like tracks and stuff, but to release to have released them, it wouldn't have really been us. So we might just sort of think we've got them on the back burner. We'll keep them as some like a B side or some sort of something for some release down the line. But to to get the like our actual sound from 
living separate and it doesn't help that we don't live particularly close either and then yeah. uh, obviously as we all you've been a, in the trade you've been absolutely flat out through lockdown as well so it's not even like you've been sat home doing your fees as has been busier than ever probably I would say so yeah, it's, it's yeah. not really it's not really worked for us yeah <laughs> so it. when are you are you when are you hoping to get back out and start performing live again have you got anything lined up um in the future or yeah, we uh, we had uh, we had a gig with this feeling. Um, we had it all booked in and for just a long time, that got cancelled. So we're looking at rearranging that. Hopefully, sort of like November time, somewhere towards the end of the year, that's going to give us time to get in the studio, record two, two or three new songs that we've got, and then we can sort of release them in build up to coming back and playing live towards the end of the year. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. Go on, sorry, as. No, no, no. That, that's yeah. That's the plan. Um, like I said, it, it's we, we we just seem. I know it's a lot of bands probably say, but we do seem to have a lot of bad luck. Like we're trying to get on with this feeling for a long time, aren't we? And um, yeah. then it happens, and then there's a global pandemic, and you know, and then <laughs> we could have been, you know, we could have been thinking of reasons why this gig wouldn't have worked out, and we're still be there now. But um, the global pandemic was the was the cause of us not being able to do it. But you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll be all right. Yeah, definitely. And I think, you know, it, we are coming out the other side of it now or appear to be. So I think there's a lot of, lot of stuff to be positive about. And uh, yeah, you know, let's, let's hope it all falls into place for you. But, um, all right, I've got, got no blinds in the kitchen and the sun is just really annoying. Are you guys well, at least I'm not rat in your kitchen. I, as, well, as, <laughs> unlike your work, mate. <laughs> for, for, uh, for those watching... Tell, Vicky, tell the story. Come on, tell the story. Oh, God, come on. Someone, someone at my work tried to use the excuse that they needed to leave because they had a rat in their kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so for Sorry, those man. watching the show, um, As is very concerned that the lighting is not getting the full effect of his shirt. I think I'm more than happy to say on behalf of everyone at Beat the First Man, <laughs> which is only me, we are getting the full effect of that shirt, As. Don't you worry. Thank you very much, Mark. Very kind words. The no shirt appreciates it as much as I do. <laughs> so let's move on to football. Um, as Man United fan, Ricky, Leeds United fan. Yeah. So we are going to have some fun with this. But as, first of all, shouldn't you be on some sort of Big Six podcast instead of my shitty little show? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll just, while we're on, I'll just say that it's an honour and a privilege to be on a podcast who is clearly an ambassador you know, for the 1975 European Cup champions. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, listen, that is just a, a, it was a disaster, wasn't it? Whoever's idea that was. But the, the most tragic thing about all that was Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> Big six, Tottenham Hotspur. Like, they, they got in there because of Harry Kane, I reckon, but, you know. I think it's, it sums up Tottenham when you look at them now and it's looking at getting linked with to be their manager. By oh, Graham Potter. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, big team you are. Jesus Christ. Well, if you um, if you go back a couple of episodes when I have a particularly big rant about the European Super League, Tottenham is the one that I saved my ire for because there's just no way they should... I think they were put in it to be the whipping boys. I think there's no other... They've got a big ground and they would have been the whipping boys and that's why they were in there. Someone for them all yeah. to beat. <laughs> Nobody can be relegated, but everyone, everybody can be spanked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, we'll start with Ricky. So first season back in the Premier League after 16 years. How have you enjoyed the season? Yeah, it's been it's been good. Um, it's been good. And it's been a strange one, aren't it? Obviously, because there's you no know, crowds and all that. But then by the same token, you you still see every game. Um, probably watched more minutes of Leeds over the past eight months than I, I've got chance to in a, in a long time, really. Um, I've always played football on Saturdays when Leeds have been on, so I've gone sporadically gone to games and watched on TV. Um, but yeah, so it's been good getting to catch a lot of the games. But yeah, it's good. It's it's gone as well as it could have done. Um, I'm kind of glad we're not going to push that ball a bit further on finishing Europe. I think it would have been a bit of a, a curse, to be honest, to, to get that. Because it's not <laughs> even the Europa League now, is it? is it? Was it this knockoff Conference League or something where you're playing in... Azerbaijan and Belarus and, <laughs> and knowing Bielsa, well, he likes a small squad. Uh, do, do we need that? Would we spend the money to be able to do have a good season next season? Probably not. So I think, yeah, it's a this is perfect season, really. Yeah, pretty, pretty, I would I would I would agree. And and as 
So obviously, there's been a lot of noise about Man United from a lot of Man United fans and Oli at the start of the season. And was he the right man? Was he not the right man? As it stands, you're in the Europa League. Well, you're in the Europa League final. Let's face it, you're not going to fuck up a 6-2 defeat in Rome. Um, you're in the Europa League final. You're second in the league. If you win the Europa League and finish second to Man City, would you class that as a successful season? Well, the Europa League to me, I think it's it's a great competition if you're a team that has started in the competition. So, like for someone you know finish sixth in the Premier League or whatever, and you go all the way and you win it, brilliant. But you know, I I just can't, I just do not agree with this stepping down. You know, you haven't been good enough for the Champions League, so we'll give you another shot at European glory. It's like, kind of like junior football, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's junior football. It, it you lose really the first is. Game, you play the, like the shit tournament. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. And I, I, I just, I can't get excited about it. Instead of finish, you know, if that had been in there from the start, then fair enough, lads. Come on, let's go win a trophy. But, you know, and, and especially how they went out of the Champions League as well. Like, they won the first three matches. Um, or was it the first? No, they beat PSG, didn't they, in Leipzig? And then yeah. they messed up a, a, a against Besiktas. But he, but but shit to her. Should we, should we get it right? Easy for you to say. <laughs> Istanbul, say that. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. That. So so that was annoying. But the league as well. Like they've just been so like up and down. Like um, she can't she can't seem to put teams away. You know she can't put get the result across the line. Um, a lot of. I mean, I'm I'm Ricky. I'll tell you, I'm a bit old school when it comes to football. I believe that you should, if you have the sight of goal, you should hit that ball as hard as you can towards that goal, <laughs> and make. The, but it's all this, you know, six, seven, eight passes before you try and get in the box and have a shot. Come on, just hit the thing. I think. So I think team, a bit of, uh, go on, sorry. A bit more ruthless. They could have. They could have probably won the league this season. But I think Pep's a lot. Of, Pep's mob are a different animal this season, aren't they? They're, yeah, I mean, I think um, you're. Foden. Actually, your two games against us probably sums up your season because in the first game, you blew us away. I mean, there's no two way. The first half hour, I mean, we might as well have got yeah. on the bus and come home then. But the game we've just played now, I genuinely don't think you'd have scored if we'd have been there till the Monday because you just didn't really look like scoring ever. Um, That's exactly it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they've got, it's weird as well. Like, they've got so much talent like going forward. You know, <laughs> apart from maybe Anthony the Marshall, who can't seem to. At a barn door, you know, with a pig's ear or whatever the saying is. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's it's nuts. Like you say, Old Trafford, we put you away within the game we've wrapped up within twenty minutes or something. I don't it? think I'd even open my first beer and it was two 0 <laughs> Yeah. Um, what what I will say is, you lot, you know, you, you have been a bit of a breath of fresh air to Premier League this season. I, I would say, but the, I think the the second this second season that's a test, isn't it? It's you know how you're gonna. Court next season. Yeah, I'm, know, I'm we... keeping my powder very dry. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's always a danger, isn't it? But I'd like to think that we're a, we're a step up from the likes of your yeah, Huddersfield and Sheffield United who sort of succumb to that. I think we've got genuine internationals. We've got Robin Cock and Rente, but we've got internationals for proper big international teams. I'd, I'd like to think we have the quality to to avoid that. Absolute plummet back to the championship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that lot of to do. Yeah, you so, might. Well, you might end up being like a yo-yo club, like uh, like West Brom and Norwich and. Oh God! Oh, it could be, no. you, you couldn't. That could never happen at Leeds. Yeah, we'd only yo. Think... We'd only yo one way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't. You, I just don't think you'd get away with it. I, I don't know what it is like about about those clubs. It's fair enough, but. Yeah, it just it, it would never work for Leeds being a yo-yo team. It just no. wouldn't happen. No. So, as we'll start with you on this one then. So, favourite ever player in a Man United shirt? It doesn't have to be the best, just the one you always wanted to be. Oh, well, um, geez, put me on the spot now. Um, I always fancy myself as a bit of a George Best, probably. Because, I mean, I can't... I, I can't this shirt! I, yeah, well, well let, hear me out. I can't, I, I can't put the, uh, I can't put the goals away, but I can put the booze away. <laughs> but, no, um, yeah, probably, be- probably George Best, or, or probably, I don't know, Je- Eric Jemba Jemba, or he was pretty. Eric Jemba Jemba, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> and Ricky, same question in a lead shirt. It's hard, isn't it? Because sort of my. My, I remember when we was in the Premier League last, 
just about, but I, I wasn't sort of old enough to appreciate. You've only been a fan for about two years, Ricky. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish. I wish. Yeah, I remember my, my well, yeah, my first game was Rushton and Diamonds oh, <laughs> against <right>. Leeds. <laughs> yeah, half of years ago. But yeah, sort of. I don't know. We've always been a bit crap when I've sort of had it. Do you know when you're that age where you idolise a football? So it's probably Jermaine Beckford banged in the goals for us during the league one years. Um, yeah. Yeah, probably that was part of my era, really. All right. Uh, that's, a, that's enough of the gentle questions. Let's have a bit of fun now. So, Ricky, you're getting the first one. So I don't know if you saw what I did to the boys from Volker. One was a Hearts fan, one was a Hibs fan. I stitched them right up with some horrid questions <laughs> to the point where that literally they tweeted me the next day and said they're having nightmares about the question. So, oh, man, I wish I had them now. <laughs> so, Ricky, leads a point, Roy Keane as manager, and he guides the team to the top four. Do you chant his name? Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Do we play good football while we do it, or is it Neil Warnock? It's, it's going to be it's going to be Roy Keane style. Well, yeah. Oh man, no, nah, he's got he's, he's got to win the league for a chance. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> off. Well, they, <laughs> the the Hibs and Hearts fans said the best they could come up with said they'd give them a gentle round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, point. that was the best they were getting. Well, that's, nobody ever applauds Scottish football anyway. So. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> uh, so, as you've got the chance, you can have Marcelo Bielsa as your manager, but you have to sack Ollie. It's like marry one foot one kill one this, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so well it's a no, completely not, no. So you'd well, keep Sol Shar over the Elsa. What are you doing with that lightning? <laughs> it's just it's the sun, it's just it's, it's setting over the uh one yonder. Um <laughs> have to move. Oh, oh, I'll leave you Camden Hells. Oh, I was gonna hey, say so there right, we go. It's a cracking little drop. I'll, I'll, oh, drop, yeah. I'll drop them an email. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get a plug. Get me, get me. <laughs> and then. <laughs> what are you on, Ricky? Oh, Asahi. Loving Asahi. Uh, I don't think I've ever had it, actually. Well, it's Japan's number one beer, mate. There we go. Hey, you can't argue with those stats. Beer, beer, <laughs> rev, beer reviews as well. What more do you want? <laughs> it's, like, it's like old Clark and another one. <laughs> right, so, gents, five-a-side team. Yeah. So yeah. if you have any rules, you have to have seen them play live. One goalie, one defender, two midfielders, one striker. But as I do with all bands, you're only allowed one team between the two of you or however many of you come on. I know from a Twitter message yesterday that you have been having some discussions about your team. Have you got a final five? We do. Excellent. I think what, what, where we sort of struggled initially, because you think five or seven, you want to make it good, don't you? We've gone completely the other way. We've made, it, <laughs> we've made it a team of bastards. That's all. We're not bothered about winning games. We just want to be ourselves. This is what we've gone for. Excellent. Well, I don't know, <laughs> do you know the boys from Lost Line? No, no. No, so the boys from Lost Line, they basically pick their team on what they'd be like for a pint afterwards. So they're entirely... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's arrange... Can you arrange some sort of meet, meet up with these lads? Because they sound like our cup of tea, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I'll be like a pint. sit around beer. Radio special. Let's sit around beer and, we, uh, and you won't go far wrong. Yeah. <laughs> right, so... Yeah. so, so you don't want to go for a pint with our team. <laughs> <laughs> so in your El Bastardo five-a-side team, then who's your, uh, who's your goalkeeper? Um, our goalkeeper is Jens Lehmann. Jens Lehmann, oh. Jens Lehmann, yeah. Um, it just brings back nightmares of seeing Arsenal trounces. Road. <laughs> but yeah, he was, yeah, he was, he was, he was just was. What, what else can you describe Jens Lehmann other than he was just a massive bastard and a shouty bastard? A very that. shouty bastard, yeah. <laughs> he was and, an angry uh, man. And I, I was, sorry, carry on. He, 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 you know, he, was, he was just a very angry man. All the, even when they were winning stuff, he was angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved bollocking defenders, didn't it? Bloody hell. I bet, he, I bet he went to sleep dreaming of bollocking defenders. Um, oh. And as we found out, Ricky, the other year, the, the German language is quite an aggressive language, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's, when, it's, we, 
when we visited the lovely country, so it is lovely, it's great. <laughs> so yeah, we're doing reviews on, on European destinations now European as well. destinations, beers of the world, and now a bastard <laughs> five-a-side tea. This is going to be one of my favourite ever zooming ins. <laughs> so you're a uh, your defender. Um, well, I've, I've gone with, um, with Stuart Pierce, psycho himself. But I, I managed to, I, I saw him kind of by the skin of my teeth, if that makes sense, because I was... He played. He, he sort of um, made a bit of a comeback for England and played in a in a in a European qualifier in '99 in the old Wembley. And I went on a on a trip and uh, and saw him. I think it was probably his last game for England. To be fair, come on, nickname psycho. <laughs> Every time you see him, he's pulling the daft face. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's missed a penalty for England. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a if penalty going for, for that. <laughs> and um, he's. It's Stuart Pearce. Yeah. And still, as far as I'm aware, the only manager to ever bring on a goalkeeper and chuck him up front because they were desperate for a goal. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. He's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't he? <laughs> and that's what, for me, he'll always be remembered for that. Bringing on David James and throwing him up front. So uh, <laughs> the, uh, the first of your midfielders then, gents. Well, it... There was a lot of contenders for this, but it only makes sense to reveal these two as a duo. But we'll, we'll start with some of the some of the, the near misses. Okay, David, yeah. Batty, David Batty was a near miss. Right. Very okay. near miss. Jesus, you uh, have got some bastards in there if he didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah. All will be revealed, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Roy Keane, near miss. Ooh. But what if this this is why it only works as a duo? Are we gonna do one each, Rick? Are we gonna? I mean, you you can you, I'll let you do both, man. Because you can go both. No, no. Them. I think I think you should reveal one, then I should reveal the other, and then it'll make sense. Go okay. For it. Well, well, mine was Lee Boyer. Yeah. And mine is Kieran Dyer. <laughs> <laughs> and if oh, you, superb! I think you should maybe put a clip, a link of of the um, the footage of the crap in. St. James's Park. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it'll make sense. I always put the photos of the players you've picked up, so it's going to be easy for a photo for this week. Yeah. I'll just put that oh, photo excellent. up. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 arguing over yeah. a, mis a misplaced pass. Brilliant. <laughs> Lee Bowyer and Kieran Dyer. Love it. <laughs> just while on my subject, Mark, I don't know if you... Um, I mean, I don't know if you're a little bit older than us, but there was didn't Black two Blackburn Rovers players do it as well in uh, in the Champions League when they got it when they won the league. Yeah, well, that was David Batty, so that was Batty oh. and Graham Lasso. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Batty and Lasso. Uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, and the ru the rumor was it was that Batty had uh, said something about Lasso's sexuality, but for, um, <laughs> 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 well, name like that's very nineties, isn't it? For, that's very nineties. With a name for, like Batty, <laughs> he had the audacity to accuse someone else. <laughs> but for, for legal reasons, that's only what I'd heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You got that. You got that. Well, <laughs> there the were there's legal reasons why our team wasn't a team of off field bastards. <laughs> well, yeah, Brian Giggs nearly captain the team. I'll put it that way. <laughs> well, you might have had one of those four in it as well. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the the glory of being the striker in a five a side team, the the ultimate bastard, the man up front who who got. Uh, Ricky Orton. Well, yeah, it could have been me. But no, it was the one and only El Hadjou. El Hadjou. <laughs> so, so you've got you've got scrappers, you've got horrible tacklers, you've got shouters, and you've got a spitter. What a spitter. What no one wants to spit. The foot the it was the worst spit ever as well, wasn't it? He kind of just, just like dribbled out of his mouth a little bit, didn't he? It, yeah. It, just... it, won't, it, won't, it, won't, it won't like that one on Rudy Waller, was it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, really massive in that, isn't it? Well, I had a, uh, a glorious Facebook moment with Al Hadjouf, not him personally. It was our, we played Doncaster, and it was when he had a ruck in the tunnel with one of the Leeds players after he, we'd scored a last minute. I think it was Becchio. He had a ruck in the tunnel. Of course, I went on and absolutely slaughtered him on Facebook. What an arsehole he is. Shouldn't be allowed near a football club. Then about, You're a brave man, Mark. You're about a brave man. 12 months later, who rocks up? <laughs> El Hadj Juf. <laughs> yeah, well, to be fair, I think Warnock had called him a sewer rat, I mean. Yeah, he called signed, him a sewer so. rat, yeah. He was, um, oh, I mean, he was horrible, wasn't he? He just was yeah, horrible. I mean, yeah, Neil Warnock is a horrible man. <laughs> 
But uh, that that is some five-a-side team for its very own reasons. That is some five-a-side <laughs> team. That has to be said. I think yeah. I, I think it's. Um, I think we've made the we've made the reasonable choices there, aren't we, Rick? I, I like it. I, I don't want to play us. Yeah. Did you no. imagine stepping onto the pitch? Stepping onto the pitch and seeing them walk. Massive, yeah. in, massive intimidation factor. <laughs> and you, you've just yeah. got to give it some real shit house name as well, so that when you go and look at your fixtures on that day for the five side, the Super Leagues. <laughs> Very good, like it. Yeah, gents, that's been absolutely brilliant. Do you know what? You, I was warned that you guys were top lads, and uh, he, he was very right when he told that me. That a little Welsh dicky bird that whispered that in your ear, <laughs> young Jackson. Uh, yeah, good Jackson. Yeah, no, he, he, he said you were good lads and he, he wasn't wrong. You've been, you've been great fun. I've, I've enjoyed this a lot, I've got to say. And, uh, um, thanks for having us on. Yeah, it's been yeah cheers, Mark. It's been more importantly, long, you know, we've had a bit of fun with the football, but guys, genuinely, they're going to be a clip of um, the Sunset Radio at the end of this chat. Please give it a watch. If you like what you see, like what you hear, go and download their tunes. It'll take you literally 30 seconds to download their tunes and it'll cost you about two quid. But genuinely, go and do it. Give guys like these a break. You know, they've been working hard through lockdown, unable to rehearse together. Give them a break. And when you see them appearing near you live, go and support them. Buy a pint, watch them perform. That's all you guys want, isn't it? And buy a seat. We'll have a pint of beer, all ten. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll buy the beer. <laughs> right, OK. When's your <laughs> next gig? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get it announced soon. <laughs> You're right, OK. <laughs> no, gents, you've been great. You've been good sports. You've been good fun. I've loved it. It's been really great. And uh, as I say, coming up just shortly is a clip of the Sunset Radio. But for now, back to the show. Cheers, gents. Cheers, Mark. Nice one. So if you close your eyes and say, keep me close to your heart. So there we go. What a five aside team. I mean, how good was that? A team of absolute bastards. And uh, I just love the fact that they spent time trying to find bastards. And I know for a fact they were arguing about who to put in the team. You know, that, that's what makes it even better. They went to a lot of thought about who to put in that team. But brilliant. So, so guys, honestly, for, for the entertainment they gave us, go and download their tunes. They're the Sunset Radio. Good music as well. Yeah, ignore my attempts at trying to uh, say who they were like. That's just just my best efforts at guessing. But uh, yeah, they were they were very good. So um, next week is the beat the first man FA Cup final special. Who will win the inaugural competition? We're gonna have some fun on the FA Cup final one as well. So look forward to that next week. Um, lineal European Cups. So only one of them was played for this week. So the lineal European Cup. You may remember. May remember. Our friends from Mainz uh, took the trophy in a shock victory over Bayern Munich. Well, they defended it. They drew one all with Hertha Berlin uh, last weekend, despite the fact they were probably on the lash for the week, having beaten Bayern Munich. Um, they got another tricky defence this week, though. They travelled to Eintracht Frankfurt, our old friends. They've been in both competitions quite regularly, so they've got a chance to take the uh, the Champions League. Uh, Champions League. Wash your mouth out, Reedy. The lineal Euro European Cup. Back off of Mainz. Uh, in the lineal UEFA Cup, there was no match last week for Susanna Hoffenheim. I don't know why, they just didn't have a game. So they remain with the trophy, but they do have a defence this week as they entertain Schalke 04, uh, which also gives me a whole week to come up with a gag involving those two teams. Now, if Schalke have an Egyptian player, walk like an Egyptian. Yeah. I'll get to work on that. So... He's back, which can only one mean one thing. It's time for how old the reveal. So you're gonna be a bit nicer this time, Ted. You were a bit, I don't know, you're a bit short. Really. It's my job on this show to be sarcastic, cynical, and the star of the show. Two out of three ain't bad, I suppose. Agreed. I need to work on my sarcasm. That wasn't the one I had. No, never mind. Anyway, Ted, guess what the public have returned this week? Lee from Swansea. 27's wrong, I'm afraid. And no, he isn't Alan Brazil. He's Ali Brazil. They're two different, two very, very different people. Is Lee stupid? It says that on the screen. Ted, don't be so rude. 
Well, what a clown. I'm not being funny. It clearly says Ali Brazil. Chester from Leicester. Chester, is that where he's from? No, he's from Leicester. He said 24. Sorry, Chester, you're wrong. Serves him right for having a place name as a name. What are you guessing, Ted? Anyway, I, I can't deal with you today. You're so aggressive. You're on the front foot. 27, I reckon. OK, well, let's remind ourselves of Ali Brazil. So here he is. Not Alan Brazil. Ali Brazil. Well, when that photo was taken, let me tell you, Ali Brazil was 21. Yes, 21. 21. You know, you said he was driving the buses. Are you sure he didn't get hit by one? Ted, he drove them when he retired. He looks old enough to have retired in that photo. Well, sorry, Ted, you got it wrong, mate. So um, we'll see you next week for another one of your little knobs of the week and another attempt at you failing miserably to guess how old the reveal. See you later, mate. So uh, there you go. He's been on one this week, hasn't he? Flipping heck. So guess the knowledge. So before last week's game, as we know, it was 16-14 to guess. So let's review last week's result and see where we are now then. So a quick review of last week's game. Yeah, we had the Man United Liverpool game, didn't we? Nothing happened. I mean, technically, I would have got all three points because I'd have got it right, so I should be in front. So it's quite annoying. But it remains guest 16, knowledge 14. So, um, you know, we have to move on to another week. So the lads this week from the Sunset Radio have chosen as the game at the London Stadium as West Ham take on Everton. The reaction, as always, I'll give you the reaction. West Ham, I think they're better. Yeah, they're fifth, love. But Everton are seventh, so there's not a lot in it. Well, incredibly, this week she applied logic. So on that basis, she's gone for West Ham to win 2-1. Now this, I think, is one of the toughest calls we've had all season, to be honest. This genuinely could easily go any of the three ways. I'm going to go on the fact that Everton's away form has been excellent this season. And West Ham have just started to wobble at the wrong time. I know they had a decent result last week, but they just started to wobble. And I just if, if Everton had got that home form right, they'd have been right up there challenging for the top four. Um, I just think that Ancelotti is going to produce one of those performances out of his team. So I'm going to go for West Ham 1, Everton 2. So we're both on two ones, the opposite way. So unless it's a draw, there's some points going one of our ways this week anyway. But uh, obviously with me protect, predicting that Everton will win, it's a cue for a right old Cockney knees up down in East London. So get your jelly deals out and all the other stuff that you do down that way if we're going to really stereotype people. Because that's what we like to do, don't we, on this show? So another show draws to a close. Another week of fun and games. Uh, guys, I hope you all enjoy it. You know, it's never meant to be taken seriously. When I ask bands to come on here, I always make a point of telling them, look, guys, you're not coming on here for hundreds of thousands of viewers. If you get one listener out of it, and I get one viewer, everyone wins. Yeah, that's what it's all about. It's all a bit, just literally a bit of fun. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please drop me a like. It's good for my ego, and it massages me badly heat. I got it right this week, yes, after last week's disastrous effort. Um, leave your comments, I'd love to know your comments. Don't forget to vote when the polls are open on Tuesday on Premier League Managers, it's a knockout. Da -da -da -da. Um, and, as always, ding ding, next stop, Saturday the 15th of May, FA Cup final day for what will be episode 39 of this silly little show. The self-proclaimed shit soccer AM. See you next week, guys. Stay safe.